old, old loser. I told you he's a product of the Hillary campaign. Write that down. You'll hear it tomorrow on the Rush Limbaugh show through a caller. He's a creation of the Clinton machine. If Bernie Sanders wasn't helping put her up in the polls by making her look more centrist, do you think he'd last a day? What, are you crazy? He may as well be working for her as a, as a, as a uh, what do you call it, a warm-up act. Say, so bring him out. He espouses the same liberation theology as the Pope. And he gets college audiences to swoon. And then she comes along and says she's a centrist because she's only a leftist. So he's a creation of her machine. That's, I don't mean they created them. I, you, don't, you don't have to look too far to find them. They're as common in universities as is, uh, well, it's a family show on the lawn. I just fill in the word after a party. But uh, I think it was Harry Truman who defined political correctness in the following way. It's like trying to pick up dog droppings from the clean end. Yeah, I think it was Harry Truman, but I'm not quite sure of that. That's what political correctness is, trying to pick up dog droppings from the clean end. Write it down. I don't know whether Harry actually said it. But I do love Hour 3 of the Savage Nation. And here we are at uh, Hour 3 of the, <laughs> of the Savage Nation. 855 <laughs> God, It's hot here. Thank God I'm violating the Pope's protocols. I'm running my air conditioner. I wouldn't be able to do this show. Was it not for the evil white male who invented air conditioning? This show wouldn't even be happening. As a matter of fact, if it wasn't for the evil white man who invented radio, come to think of it, it wasn't for the evil white male uh, and the capitalists who developed the microphones, uh, you wouldn't be able to listen to me. I guess that's one of the reasons that the Pope and the other Marxists hate capitalism so much, is because it makes ideas spread too rapidly. How are you going to take, take people, people back to the 15th century if they can communicate? I think you ought to attack the internet next <clears throat> as ungodly. If it wasn't his church, you will put people to, uh, to death because they believe that the uh, earth was the center of the universe? Oh, yeah, I think so. The same church that had 96% of scientists at the time proving beyond a reasonable doubt that the earth was the center of the universe. And those poor scientists who dissented, wow, they didn't get any grants from the Vatican. No, sorry, Bob, those grants didn't come rolling it down from the Vatican to any scientist who had data to the contrary, showing that the sun was actually the center of the universe. In fact, if the scientists spoke out too freely, they were usually killed, very much along the lines of what your liberal professors are, are demanding be done now uh, by uh, government zero. Did you know that some of your liberal professors demanded that RICO statutes be enacted against scientists who say that global warming is not established science? Do you be, can you believe we've fallen this far in American history that so-called scientists have become nothing but fascist martinets? Yeah, well, of course, they always have been. That's why they're scientists. If they could make a living, they'd be in the private sector. They wouldn't have to collect a, 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 a grant in the Caltown in Washington to get their grants to prove false science. So we're living in very dangerous times. And uh, I don't know, we, we come out of this or not, it's hard to say. I know this Catholic Church is a nightmare right now. They fought communism in the 80s. They opposed communists and communism. And now we have a communist pope. So, it's a pretty uh, crazy time. That's why um, people are troubled. And so they're turning out of, tuning out of politics. They're saying it's too complicated. That's what we're, foking, fo foking? That's what we're focusing on the weather. And it's so hot. I'll tell you there's one good thing about the heat, getting back to the weather, is that I generally never drive in a convertible. And, and, and I, Anyone drives in a convertible in the heat I think is psychotic. I don't understand it. I see bald men driving around with the tops down in the heat going, mmm, delicious. What are they, like skin cancer of the, of the head? But anyway, I, you know, I have a convertible. I never use it because I hate the sun. It's like a poison to me. It's like a, a, a death machine. But thank God for the heat, because at 9 o'clock at night, when the, when the heat finally drops a little bit, I do drop the top and take Teddy for a ride, as I did last night. i got to tell you, there's something beautiful about being on a country road with a dog and listening to the hum of your engine. There's something really amazing about it as you downshift from 6 to 5 to 4 to 3 to 2 to 1 uh, on, a, on a highly tuned Italian <laughs> engine. I only drive that car when there's a heat wave at night. Otherwise, it sits in the garage and smiles at me. And I don't want the Pope to know anything about it. Even though the car is Italian, I don't want him to know about it because it does have air conditioning, I must admit. But I think that the papal vehicles must also be air conditioned somehow. 
I somehow think that he it's like Jane Fonda used to espouse environmentalism as well. But people said she was a hypocrite because of the way she lived. And then there was the issue of Barbara Streisand 20 years ago espousing the dangers and the evils of air conditioning. Or she lived in a house that required the energy equivalent of an entire province of India just for her to brush her teeth in the morning. <laughs> so is there anything new under the sun other than liberal hypocrisy? No. So what do we do? How do we survive this? I mean, people don't know what to do. Well, first you mock them. The last thing we have left is mocking Obama and mocking the Pope. The day we can no longer mock them for their hypocrisy is the day we're living in a dictatorship. So mock them, if you will. Don't be so intimidated by them. Just stop it already. They're only men. And the world will survive them. And they'll be forgotten. They will be forgotten. Trust me, they will be forgotten. It will all go away like a bad nightmare, I hope. That is, unless he continues to flood America with Muslims, then, hey, we don't really know. We don't really know, do we? Now that we think about it, Friday night he said, oh, I'm going to bring in 10,000 Muslims from Syria. People were shocked. By Saturday morning, woke up, had a light breakfast, something suitable for a thin man. No meat, of course, no eggs, no potatoes. Probably not even coffee, probably drank chai. Probably had some chai tea and a complimentary uh, cereal of some kind to go with his uh, new age diet. And he said, you know what, 10,000 isn't enough and no one said anything. All right, get, get the mic going. I'm gonna bring in 100,000 Syrian refugees, mainly Muslim men. No opposition. They couldn't wake up John Boehner, the drunk. He was in a deep, deep sleep from the night before. So he figured no one said anything. He called up John Kerry and they said, well, let's try 200,000 on Sunday and see what happens. Sunday morning, after a night out in the town Saturday, the president got up and went to the presidential uh, radio room and he said, I'm going to bring in 200,000 Syrian Muslims, mainly men of military age, very few women and children. Again, there was no opposition anywhere to be found. And so somebody sat down and wrote a fable called The King Has No Clothes. The problem was is that if you put the past together with the present, you come up with the future, the future, and that's not a pretty sight to look at. So here we go to the callers on the Savage Nation. I don't know that I want to go to the callers on the Savage Nation. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I'm just having a kind of nice time, not a great time, a good time. Quieter time than normal on the Savage Nation. Now is the time to get down and fight. And the best way to fight is to fight them on their own turf. And that's with the truth. Truth, sarcasm will always win. And boy, do we need more truth and sarcasm for this false prophet from Rome. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Climate change? That's his expertise? Attacking our economic system when it's our econo economic system that has lifted more people out of poverty than any other system ever tried in the history of the world? Yeah, well, be careful. Immigration, of course, you know why the church is in favor of massive immigration, especially from uh, South America, uh, Mexico and Central America. It's because they're Catholics and they need to fill up the pews because most Americans have walked away from the church owing to the molestation scandal and, and for other reasons. So they need to fill the pews again. There's a lot of money invested in the uh, bricks and mortar. So where do you get them from? You import them. He would go so far as even to cater to Cuba because there's a, a, an audience there that could kick up to the Vatican. Now you think about this. Here's a guy, goes to Cuba, and here's a Cuba that's a prison camp. It's a death camp. And he goes to Cuba and doesn't, not only do they not let dissidents in, they beat them up and throw them in prison today. Yeah, didn't make it to the Chronicle, did they? Look at the pictures on the Drudge Report of the uh, dissidents. By the way, they're of color. I don't know how you say that. I mean, they're dissidents of color being beaten up by thugs of color. If you look at the picture, it's, it's kind of a paradox. It's very hard for liberals to understand how to compute that. If you go to the Drudge Report, the pictures were, I hope it's still up. Let me go back. It's gone already. I think it's up to Walker out. Earlier, I had a great, uh, Walker on a motorcycle. Matt changed it already. Go back to the other one. It was better. He had a picture of dissidents in Cuba, a, a lady of color and a man of color being beaten up by thugs of color, Castro's uh, killers and thrown into some uh, uh, roving van because they wanted to protest the prison camp of Cuba. The Pope ignored them completely, the man of peace. 
That's all. And now he comes to America. A pope to the White House? A pope in front of Congress? How is this even possible? How is it even possible? It would be strange enough that a pope would address Congress, but that a communist pope would address a Congress like this? This is unbelievable to me. American Catholics, largely of Irish, Italian, Polish, and Hispanic extraction, have been accused of having more loyalty to Rome than their homeland. Long-term fears. The United States has had a long history of anti-Catholicism since the first settlers were mostly Protestants who brought with them their disdain for Catholicism, said Thomas Rees, a senior analyst for National Catholic Reporter. They also fear that if Catholics ever got power, they would impose their religion on the country. <laughs> the know-nothings, the KKK, and anti-immigrant movements were all anti-Catholic. Oh, that's intriguing. Oh, I see. So the next thing is anyone who attacks the Pope is going to be a Ku Klux Klan member. Okay, so that's the script. I got it. I got it. So the next script for guys like uh, Politico, the Beard, whatever his name is, Chuck Beard, and uh, the Woodpecker will be, um, your anti-Pope message resonates with that of the Ku Klux Klan. Are you now or have you ever supported the Ku Klux Klan, Mr. Trump? I see. That's how, okay, got the, they got the message. They're going to give him a little training over the next night or two. All right, call up the guy, that bearded one, that schmuck that I make. I let him in once in a while. And get that other idiot, the woodpecker there from CNN. Get him in here. We got a new script for them. It's the Ku Klux Klan and Trump. All right, I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Let me put it to you this way. When it comes to issues like abortion, homosexual marriage, things like that, uh, all right, fine, I could see the church having an opinion on that because it's pretty clear what the moral issues are on those issues. The church stands for something or doesn't. But when it comes to global warming or climate change, where there's absolutely no proof whatsoever that it's anthropogenic in this generation or that man is destroying the earth, for this pope, this false pope, to get up there without any proof whatsoever Moreover, no definitive proof whatsoever, no definitive proof. This is the church, remember, that killed people for saying that the earth was not the center of the universe. This is the same church that now is joining those who say that if you don't agree with us on global warming, you should be excommunicated from the scientific community, you should lose your grants, and now a few of the crackpots in the university are saying that the government should bring the RICO statutes against scientists who disagree with the lie of global warming. The church, by the way, used to require that Catholics, if they came into power, made Catholicism the state religion. Did you know that? But after the Second Vatican Council in 1961, that changed. Future Catholic presidents did not have to make Catholicism the state religion, right? So then in 1979, Jimmy Carter became a president. Pope John Paul II came to the White House for the first time. But these meetings were little more than symbolic gestures with little political substance, and nobody objected to it. It was a nice thing. John II was a nice guy. Visited the White House, visited uh, Carter. No one said anything. And then Ronald Reagan, John Paul II, both were vehemently anti-communist. Now, all of a sudden, we have a communist Marxist president, a communist Marxist pope, and they have a meeting of the minds, and they're out to take Pelham one, two, three. I can't wait to see the atheist who spit on the church a year ago bowing on Wednesday and Thursday.